Hello and welcome to this episode of Essex by the Sea. I'm Owen Ward, exploring the Essex coast, finding out about the amazing and interesting stories it has to offer. Don't forget, Essex by the Sea is now available on your smart speakers. All you have to do is tell your device to play Essex by the Sea podcast. Now, a number of people have got in touch with me asking me to dedicate an episode to Jaywick. So here we are, located just a couple of miles southwest of Clacton, the village of Jaywick, which at the time of recording is only a few years off celebrating its 100th birthday. Famed for its golden beaches and for being the location of the oldest known man-made wooden artefact ever found in the British Isles, Jaywick has a strong community feeling to it. Uh, Danny Sloggett is the local resident, uh, some would call him Mr Jaywick, and joins me now on this episode of Essex by the Sea. Hello Owen, great to hear, hear your introduction, very professional and very well put. You put <laughs> Jaywick on the map for the right reasons. So first of all then Danny, how long have you been in Jaywick? How, how long have you lived there? I lived in the Costa del Jaywick because when you live in Jaywick, it's a holiday capital of the world. So we don't call it Jaywick. We call it the Costa del Jaywick. That is how the residents um, see Jaywick. It's beautiful sandy beaches and it's totally different when you're on the inside than when you're on the outside looking in. If you know what I mean, I mean. That's the thing, Danny, because, um, you know, I, I've spoken to other contributors, uh, one of which uh, very early on, I think it was about episode two, I think it was, of Essex by the Sea. Uh, Chris, who was the coast walker, he walked through uh, Jaywick. I caught up with him when he got to Brightlingsea and he said, actually, the beaches of Jaywick were fantastic and he'd like to come back and, and spend a bit more time there. Others have got in touch and said, Jaywick, you, you must do an episode about Jaywick. So uh, has the, the, the village got a very strong community feel then Danny it's totally got community feel Jaywick has got something that I don't see anywhere else I have lived in London I've lived in Colchester I've lived in Thailand and Cambodia for four months I've been to the Caribbean four times I'm a pretty well-traveled man and Jaywick keeps calling me back and there is nowhere in the world with the community spirit that Jaywick's got but um the first question you asked me was how long have I lived in Jaywick for? Well, I moved to Jaywick when I was 11 years old in 1986. And I was dead against it. I thought, I'm not having this. Because when I moved there at age 11, it was 1986. And Butlins in Clacton had just closed its doors. Now, Clacton and Jaywick have lost a million people a year coming to this area. That had a really big knock-on effect to Jaywick. Because Jaywick was labelled an overspill for Butlins. All the people that come to visit people at Butlins, all their relatives and that used to come to Jaywick to meet them, etc. So Jaywick was like an overspill for Butlins. It had all the nightclubs, it had all the shops, it had all the butchers, the bakeries. It was a proper Costa del Jaywick place. That's how that's how I remember it when I first got here. Because everything was still here and open. And from 1986 for the next 25 years, everything closed down, everything shut. And I was age 11, moved, moved from Clapton to Jaywick, and Clapton was a lot more livelier and buzzing and happier than what Jaywick was when I got here. When I got to Jaywick in 1986, it was around February or March, and basically I walked along some garden walls. No one was there to stop me because there was no one here. It was like a ghost town. I, I couldn't see one person for about the first three years, and I felt I was the youngest person in Jaywick in 1986, and I felt I was the only young person in Jaywick in 1986. So I thought, I'm going to make this place my own. The only thing I can get out of Jaywick is making it my own because no one else is making it there so there's no one else here. <laughs> and that's how I looked at it in 1986, age 11. I had a project on my hands. I loved Jaywick because it was mine. That's what I thought in my head. So basically, you know, age 11, 12, 13, 14, even though Jaywick was pretty, things I can't say on an interview, it didn't have a good reputation. People that I went to school with um, for the first five years, from age five to 11 in Clapton, they used to love me. But as soon as I moved to Jaywick, some of them called me Jaywick Scum. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, we just done five years at primary school together. We used to play football together. We loved each other. Now, as soon as I moved to Jaywick, these same people have turned on me. And you tell me about that. You tell me how that has happened. That is unbelievable, isn't it, Owen? Well, it is because it's about being perceived and, and there is a lot of perception about Jaywick. 
as to to what it's like and and that's something I, I wanted to explore with you Danny and, and and I can hear the passion covered across uh, in, in in bucket loads uh, from you about uh, Jaywick because it, it is quite a unique location as you say you know it has struggled in the last 30 odd years from that decline of the the traditional seaside holidays which the tendering coast all along you know all the way up to Harwich uh, sort of suffered from that decline but now you know the tendering coast uh, is now beginning to to come back and and certainly over the last couple of years with people having holidays in the British Isles because we haven't been able to go anywhere else um, has, has that sort of perhaps turned or starting to turn the fortune to Jaywick round a bit do you think? Yeah, they need to do a lot more than what's going on now. I mean, Jaywick, they've knocked everything down worth coming to Jaywick for, in my opinion. So if I had Jaywick or control of Jaywick, I would start by put, re- replacing Jaywick with what it once had, because that's what Jaywick was originally built for. So why would they build Jaywick as a seaside holiday town and then do away with that? They need to return to what Jaywick was originally created for, is my opinion. And there is loads and loads of land behind my house, less than two minutes from the seawall. I propose that Disneyland come here. They build a Disneyland resort in Britain, right here in Jaywick, and that will bring people back to Jaywick and they can see how wonderful we are. That is what Jaywick needs. And if I was the, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, I would make sure that Jaywick got the investment it needs to return it to the Costa del Jaywick that I keep going on about. That's what Jaywick was designed for. That's what Jaywick should be today. And until it is, I won't be very happy. Do you know what I mean? You mentioned at the beginning uh, of this episode that you need to be in Jaywick to, to, to really see it and, and really get to know it. And, and like many yes. coastal parts of, of Essex, Jaywick isn't really the sort of place you generally pass through to get somewhere else. You've got to go to Jaywick for a specific reason. Do you think, and, and given what you've just said, it, it feels a bit remote, it feels a bit cut off? Yeah, well, basically, there's only one road in, one road out. Unless you get lost, not many people are coming to Jaywick unless they know Jaywick. But hopefully all these interviews I'm doing and all these all these great blogs I make on my YouTube channel every day, uh, basically I, I'm always making films of how wonderful it is here, etc. So a lot of people come to Jaywick on my films alone and what I'm trying to tell people. I don't ever mention what other people mention, but the people that mention things about Jaywick have never actually been here. Mm. So they're just making it up, in my opinion, because all the things that they've said about Jaywick are not even true. They should actually come to Jaywick and let me give them a tour of Jaywick. And they can see that the things that they're saying are not even true. The things I've heard them say about Jaywick, that we're the most deprived place in Great Britain. How are we the most deprived place in Great Britain? We've got everything here. We've got all the things that anyone would need. And how is that deprived? You know, I've been to places up north where there's not a window in a road. Now that's deprived. Jaywick is nothing like that, you know? Well, Danny, funny you should mention that because recently the village has ranked eighth in the worst places to live list by the I Live Here website. I'll just dis- sure. read what it, they describe it as, Danny. I like your thoughts afterwards. Uh, yes. They describe Jaywick as a shanty town built on the undercarriage of Clacton that makes even the worst bits of Blackpool seem like paradise. Yeah, well, I think the people that write these magazines, I want to personally invite them to Jaywick and let me give them a guided tour of Jaywick and let me show them that that is something that maybe was it was like that in the old days, but today it is nothing like that. Today we have got regeneration. The council have brought all the land that's abandoned up and they're, and they're regenerating Jaywick right now. They're doing a great job. I haven't seen much of the council for the first 30 years of me living here, but the, the last six years... The council have really put Jaywick at the front of their agenda. They built 10 new houses, brand new houses on reclaimed land, and they're encouraging other building building contractors to come and build 500 to 1,000 houses. It's so great, and the views they've got here are phenomenal, and Jaywick just needs to be given a proper chance, and people should not judge Jaywick unless they've lived here or they've been here. And anyone that has been here or anyone that has lived, uh, lived here or been here would never say them things about Jaywick. And it makes people very cross because we know the things they're saying are not true. Now, I would like this podcast to go straight to the people that writ that article. So I, Danny Sluggett, can personally give them a tour of Jaywick and show them that what they're saying is make-believe. Whoever writes these things, I can guarantee you, has not lived in Jaywick. Because if they had, they would see the community spirit we got 
and they'll be able to feel it wherever they are in the world. So in that case then, Danny, if, uh, unfortunately for this episode, we're not able to, to actually meet up and, and, and you give me that tour, Jay Wick, although we must do yes. that on a future episode, certainly. Please, what what please. would you be showing me then? Give me maybe yes. the, the top place that you'd say, Owen, oh, Essex by the Sea podcast must come and see this in Jay Wick. I would take them to the to the beach in Jay Wick, first of all, the Jay Wick beach. There's, there's bays that they built up. When I first moved here in 1986, Jay Wick was at risk of flooding. So they brought loads of rocks in from Holland and made loads of groins off the beach of Jaywick. And over the last 30 years, all of these groins have made Jaywick into loads of little bays. And they're all they're all like half moon shaped. And they're all the way from Clacton, all the way up to St. Osif. And it saved Jaywick from getting flooded, and it looks phenomenal. That is the first place I'd take you. Then I'd walk you along the sea wall, and I'd take you through the three parts of Jaywick. I would take you to the Tudor Estate. I would take you to the Jaywick Village. I would take you to the Brooklands. I would show you all of the good in each place. I would show you how it's totally safe. I would talk you through memories that I've experienced through the last 36 years, telling you how great it is, how the people are wonderful. We would meet people along the way, people that back up what I'm saying, and so on and so on and so on. And by the time you finish, you, you will be in love with Jaywick, just like I am. You mentioned about when you was at school and, and how friends turned on you. Yep. When you are in other parts of the world, as you, you have been, Yes. When you say, I live in Jaywick, what's yep. the reaction you get from other people? They smile because they love me. They go, oh, wow, it must be wonderful because you're from there. I said, yep, <laughs> it should be called Danwick because I live there. <laughs> I've never met anyone called Jay. So how about we rename Jaywick Danwick? They go, no, you should name it Slugwick. I said, let's not get involved. But yeah, because basically I'm very outgoing and very forward and very lively and very happy. And because Jaywick, we had to make our own entertainment. Ever since I was 11, I had to occupy myself in Jaywick, and this is who I am today. Jaywick has made me this very outgoing, this very productive, this very person that likes to be filmed. A lot of people, I'm very natural when it comes to television. I've done lots of television episodes. I've worked with Channel 5, ITV, BBC, Sky. I've done Belgium TV, German TV. I've worked on television all over the world. I've done two series on Channel 5, a Christmas special, Benefits by the Sea. I've done a program with Kathy Burke last year called Money Talks, Kathy Burke. I've worked with Kathy Burke, all of this from Jaywick. And people say I'm natural because I am the way I am. But I thank Jaywick for making me this way because there's not a lot else to do here. So you have to kind of make your own entertainment and you have to kind of improvise. And a lot of the people that lived in Jaywick when I first arrived here were in their, were older than me. So a lot of my best friends were in their 60s or 70s when I was a teenager. And it's made me the way I am. And I thank Jaywick for that because I don't think if I was anywhere else, I don't think I'd been able to have been myself as much as Jaywick has allowed me. And I love Jaywick for that. Jaywick has allowed me to be exactly what life wanted me to be. And a lot of places make people what them places want to make people, which is different from what it's done for me. So I'd rather, if anyone wants to find theirself, if anyone, if anyone wants to know who they are, then Jaywick is the perfect place for them. Because there's not a lot of stuff to distract you here. And there's nothing that's gonna like uh, there's nothing that's gonna distract you basically. I mean, so basically Jaywick is very good for people to be themselves. Your enthusiasm, your passion for Jaywick has come across, Danny, in this episode hugely. It's it's leapt out of the speakers uh, to, to our listeners. Danny, finally from from me, how would you like people to describe what Jaywick is? Okay, I'd like people to describe Jaywick like first of all, they come here. First of all, they've been here. First of all, they've actually been to Jaywick before they have an opinion. I would like that, first of all. I don't think someone should um, say something about somewhere without actually visiting there. I don't think that does Jaywick justice. So first of all, once you've actually been here, you will see the smiles on people's faces. You will see the way it's all bit created in the 1930s and how there's a certain era to Jaywick. You could actually feel that it's 1960 or 1970, not 2022. I don't think age and time actually reflect on Jaywick. So basically, by coming to Jaywick, you're going back to the future. And I love that about Jaywick. I love the way it's like a time capsule. And life doesn't really touch you here. Whatever's going on in the world with, like, topics or whatever, none of that affects Jaywick. The people are in their own world. What I love about Jaywick is individuality. And when people come to Jaywick, they will see each person as so much individual talent. And they will see the beautiful beaches, the way 
people here make the most out of Jaywick. The way all the groups in Jaywick. I mean, when I first came to Jaywick, there was nothing going on. Now there must be five or six groups in Jaywick. And I created one myself. I created the Jaywick Sands Happy Club because I've lived here for so many years. And I knew a lot of people my age. There was nothing going on for adults in their 30s and 40s. I thought, right, I'm going to create a youth club for adults. And because I want people to be happy, I'm going to call it the Jaywick Sands Happy Club. I started that in 2016, January the 3rd. And it is now uh, January 2022. It's my sixth year and I still do Jaywick Sands Happy Club the first Tuesday of every month. I do it at St. Christopher's Church. Anyone that's listening to this podcast, please come to St. Christopher's Church, Meadow Way, on the first Tuesday of any month from 6pm to 8pm. I will personally invite you to my happy club, meet some of the residents of Jaywick, and then you can have an opinion of Jaywick yourself without no one telling you what to think or say. Um, I think people need to make their mind up for themselves, but I'm sure when they come to Jaywick and meet me and see the things that I'm doing and what other people are doing here, when they see what we're doing here, if we're the most deprived place in Great Britain and the things we're doing, imagine what we could do if we had some money and some support and some backup. And that's what I encourage people to do. I encourage people to believe in Jaywick. I encourage people to invest in Jaywick. I encourage people to come to Jaywick. And that is what I, my opinion of Jaywick is. Until you've actually been here, do not have an opinion. And please come and see the Costa del Jaywick and see how wonderful it is every day, every night, always, forever. But trust me, Jaywick is beautiful. Jaywick is wonderful. And everyone is welcome. Danny Sloggett, uh, Mr. Jaywick, perhaps uh, you could be described as. Thank you ever so much for, for joining me on this episode of Essex by the Sea. I mean, thank you for a wonderful interview. Thank you for asking me these questions because I could actually talk about Joey for the next three weeks if you allow me to. <laughs> the tape reel will run out, I'm sure. Daddy, thank you ever so much. Episodes of Essex by the Sea continue to drop on the 1st and 15th of each month. You can also find the podcast across social media as well. So get liking and following on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. So until next time, thanks very much for listening. 